Hey guys, so I just wanted to teach you a little bit about uh, choosing wood for spoons. When I first started, I made it really complicated what kind of woods to choose from. Uh, you know, was it going to carve from apple wood or black walnut? And I just had to have the fanciest types of wood. Um, one thing I really realized that uh, I wish I realized before was to just make use of what is um, native to your area and what, what is there an abundance of. So for me personally, I came across a good uh, selection of birch. Um, I basically got a couple hundred acres to choose from and I can carve uh, as much birch as I want. So one thing I have been doing is making sure I, I learn how to carve birch really well. Um, rather than choosing a bunch of different types of wood to carve from, I want to get good at one type of wood. And so, um, so that's something I, I would uh, recommend that, um, that you guys try. As far as trying to carve different types of wood, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and it, I, I remember just how excited I would get um, when a, a new piece of wood would come around. And, um, and so I still get a little excited if there's something I haven't carved. I, you know, I'm interested to see what it's like. But, um, but it's really beneficial as a carver to, to stick to one type of wood and um, get good at carving that wood. Um, so for example, birch. Birch is a little bit plain. Um, it's not that appealing when it's finished all the time. Sometimes it can be. Sometimes uh, if you got a wave in the grain or if it's a curly um, birch, um, once it's oiled or sanded or uh, tooled finished really well, the grain can pop out really nice and, uh, and it can be quite stunning. But, um, but what's, uh, what's more important is that you learn how to, to carve really well. Make your carving skills stand out rather than what type of wood it is. Um, so that's, uh, that's just one thing. I, it's like I'm speaking to the, the younger me right now. But, um, but different types of wood that, uh, for me personally, that are available locally and that I, I, I enjoy carving are, I have black walnut. It hasn't come around in a little while. I'm good friends with an arborist, and so I just wait till he's taking down a black walnut or pruning one. But uh, people are a little hesitant to take down a black walnut tree just because, um, you know, it's... You don't just want to just cut down trees for no reason if you don't need to. So um, so anyways, black walnut is really nice to carve. I have got a little bit of butternut. It's uh, very similar uh, carving wise and appearance wise to English walnut. And um, and so uh, yeah, another nice uh, wood to carve for spoons. Um, or even small bowls. I've done some butternut bowls and uh, they turned out real nice. Cherry is another great wood to carve. Um, I think it seems to be more plentiful in the States. Uh, up here in Canada, I, there's just not that many cherry trees. Um, there's the odd one, but I haven't got um, any new cherry in almost a year. So I'm down to my last few little pieces, and um, yeah, hopefully I get some more soon. Sumac is another type of wood that is very common around here. Uh, this is staghorn sumac. It's got a brilliant green color to it, and uh, so the, the challenge is finding sumac that's big enough. I do have some 8 to 10 inch diameter sumac that I've got that um, I plan to carve some cups out of. But uh, as far as spoons, if, if you have some uh, sumac that's large enough, uh, I would encourage you to try and make a cooking spoon out of uh, some sumac. I, I don't know if I do eating spoons, it's a little bit on the light side. But yeah, give it a shot if you can get a hold of some. Another wood that's very common around here that uh, most people wouldn't think to carve spoons from is buckthorn. So this is a buckthorn crook that I'm going to carve a ladle from eventually. Um, but it's a very thorny bush that uh, I think it's got um, berries on it. I can't remember what color they are. But, um, but anyways, real ugly thing. But if you can get a, a nice enough piece, um, there's actually some nice wood inside. It, it's almost got this holographic look to it. Or iridescent look once it's all finished and um, tough as nails so you'll definitely have a workout carving uh, buckthorn this crook is interesting um, if you're new this is uh, new to carving this is basically what you call a crook it's just a bend in the the branch and so one thing that makes uh, this fun to carve is that the grain is going with the uh, the shape of the spoon so you can't always carve this shape out of a, a straight piece the grain will uh, will not be flowing with the bowl, and it essentially makes a weaker spoon. So if you if you're hiking through the woods and you find a crook like this, grab it, cut it out, and split it, and there's your spoon blank. It's uh, you know it helps you with the side profile already, but also give you a, str a strong spoon to carve. Applewood is a is a wood that was abundant for me for a while, um, 
but it's just very tiring to carve. Um, fruit woods are excellent for spoons, uh, eating spoons or cooking spoons. It's very tough and it looks beautiful. Uh, like I said, the issue uh, mainly is how tough it is to carve. You're going to have tired hands after carving an applewood spoon. Another issue is that a lot of the grain is uh, very wavy and, and kind of crazy. Um, so this is a branch from applewood and it's fairly straight. But if you're carving from the chunk of applewood, a lot of the times the grain is just uh, so crazy you can hardly get a spoon blank from it. So there's two basic ways you can get a spoon blank. One is from a branch. Basically you find a branch that is the width of the spoon you'd like to carve. Or you split billets out of a log. A billet is just spoon blank shaped pieces split from a log. And the grain is very straight. Um, this is birch for example. And so there are going to be some eating spoons that I'll carve up later. But um... If you're going to get your spoon blanks from logs like this, you're going to get fewer spoon blanks. You have to be fairly picky about how many knots are on your branch. Um, it's got to be the right width, and uh, it's got to be healthy, straight, fa fairly straight. And so if you get a whole tree, you're going to get more spoons if you learn how to, to split billets. One tool you can use to split billets is a fro. So this one my friend made me. But if you don't have your own fro, I have a link below, and that's to Amazon, and the fro I think is about $40. It's a great investment and a great tool to have on you. Basically what this tool does is help split along the grain and give you very straight pieces. You can also use your axe, but you're limited to the, the width of the blade. You can split billets from a log with just your axe, but you might want to make yourself a wooden wedge to help you split a log. This wedge in particular is made from hard maple, and I use the chainsaw to shape it. So what I'll do is I'll pound my axe blade into the end of the log so that I have a divot for the wedge to sit in and then use my mallet to pound those wedge in and you'd be surprised what kind of log you can split with a piece of wood. So as far as what kind of woods to carve, uh, that question has been asked uh, many times. Um, hard, hardwoods or softwoods, I do carve from red cedar sometimes and honestly it feels a little bit more uh, tough than some hardwoods. Wood that's loaded with sap I might stay away from. You uh, might just gum up your tools, your hands and, and whatnot. But I highly recommend you carving from wood that's local and is abundant. I think it's better to learn how to carve one type of wood rather than having a, uh, than having a vast array of uh, species of wood that you carve. It really just helps you to hone in on your carving skills to pick one wood and get really good at it. One concern might be is if your piece of wood is spalting. Generally, that's okay if the integrity of the wood is, uh, is not affected. While carving a spalted spoon, if you notice that there's like a fungus or a spongy material, I would just chuck that piece and probably not continue. Most of the wood I carve is green. The log has been cut down maybe within a few weeks, and that just makes it nicest to carve. You can carve from seasoned wood, or milled planks, but honestly, it's not really worth your time. If you're in the bush, you're going to carve green wood. It makes carving easier, and when you carve a small uh, spoon, generally there's no cracking issues to worry about. So I hope that covered a bunch of issues as far as um, where to get your wood or what kind of woods to carve spoons out of. If I forgot to touch on something in this topic, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you, and I'll try and add it into the next video. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and like the video. Thanks guys and stay tuned until next time.